The name of this video is The Art of Isis Rodriguez, Part 1, How It All Began. I'm going to talk about my beginnings of my life as an emerging artist living in San Francisco, California during the 90s. In 1988, I graduated from the University of Kansas with a BFA in painting and arrived in San Francisco a year later, one month after the Loma Prieta earthquake. I was very excited to be in a legendary city that was known as the ground zero of leftist politics, sexual liberation, and a world-renowned artist haven. I had gotten accepted into the San Francisco Art Institute to work on my MFA in painting. These were my circle of friends while I was at the Art Institute. We were a bunch of multicultural artists who identified as Chicanos, feminists, Malcolm X radicals, fighting for the injustices of the world. While I was there, I was inspired by a couple of classes. One was called Art and Social Responsibility and the other was Women in Art. In my Women in Art class, there was a chapter called Sex Positive Feminism. Now this was ironic, for all the feminists I knew always told me to use my mind and not my body to make a living. And so I decided to choose Sex Positive Feminism as my thesis. I found myself walking into a strip club and auditioning. Within a week, I became an exotic dancer to investigate sex positive feminism. I also decided to become an underground labor activist, using my art to attract attention to the injustice to exotic dancers. In those days, the strip club owners were pimping the dancers for $200 per eight hour shift and calling them stage fees. We fought back and created an organization called Exotic Dancers Alliance. In 1997, I had a solo art exhibition curated by Chicana painter and activist Yolanda Lopez. I titled it, My Life as a Comic Stripper, and it was held at the Galleria de la Raza in the Mission District. My vision for this show was to use the cartoon as a political tool to talk about the politics of exotic dancers much like they do in newspapers in their editorial sections. My life as a comic stripper attracted over 500 attendees and I got a lot of press. It also launched me into the San Francisco art world. My artwork attracted a performance artist named Guillermo Gomez Pena who asked me if I could perform what I was trying to say in my paintings. And so I created an archetype called the Zapatista Stripper, who represented a movement of women who were against exploitation. I performed her at the McSterminator Project back in 1998. And in that same year, Exotic Dancers Alliance won their class action lawsuit against the Mitchell brothers. And in 2000, I received a check for $10,000 and had recouped all my stage fees. I decided it was a good time to retire from dancing, but I was scared because I had depended on exotic dancing for almost 11 years and it had defined me as an artist. And now, here I was, leaving a business 
that gave me stability for another that I have always desired, which was to be a full-time artist. But how would I survive it? And so I began a new series of paintings to discuss what it felt like transitioning from exotic dancer to my new life as an artist. This concludes The Art of Isis Rodriguez Part 1, How It All Began. If you would like to know more about my art and how I survived, just subscribe and hit the bell to be notified. I'm also on Patreon if you'd like to support me.